Welcome back, Duelists, Casual Duelist here, and it's Tuesday. Now, I know I talked a little bit about this last week. I said I wanted to make a deck for you guys for Speed Duel, and I wanted to do it based off of a viewer submission. Now, what I was actually trying to clean up was a wonderful build featuring the Green Baboon Guardian of the Forest, and unfortunately for me... Um, while I was playing the, the Phantom Beasts, it was a lot easier to throw him in his attack because, of course, once you have fused into Chimera, it is more realistic that your opponent would actually try to blow up the beast. Uh, but due to the wording and the errata on it, uh, we are no longer allowed to summon it on a monster that's being destroyed during the battle phase. And with the card pool the way that it is right now, I don't feel that he is... Uh, consistent enough for his own deck profile however there is another and that is the deck i have actually come to profile for you today so i'm sorry wolf uh going a little off the rails here we're gonna go ahead and use most of your build for the new build so real quick we're gonna use your skill the joey wheeler i'm just gonna attack and then we're going to move off into some Beast Warriors. So we're going to run three copies of Enraged Battle Ox today. Uh, pretty good hitter. We are going to use two copies of the Mana Core of Darkness, our new boss monster. We are going to use two copies of the Pitch Black War Wolf, because he's amazing. And uh, three copies of Vorse Raider, because surprisingly enough, this guy's not a fiend. He's a Beast Warrior. So uh, we're going to run double copies, Fire Formation Tanky. Very good. We are going to run double copies Foolish Burial. Excellent. We are going to run triple copies Book of Moon. I'm not sure why that was all out of alphabetics, uh, but yes. Uh, to round this out to 20, we are just going to run three copies Horn of the Phantom Beast. I think the strategy is pretty clear now. Going over to the extra deck, we are going to run my standard Arcana Knight, Blue Eyes Ultimate, Ultimate, Senshi, Restrict and Restrict. And going to the sideboard for the uh, second and third game matchups. Uh, double Cosmic Cyclone, one cross out, double Waking the Dragon, single Zoma the Spirit. So if you guys were just interested in a Beast Warrior Speed Duel deck list, that has now been provided. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> if it helps, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, what helps more than that? Please tell a friend, tell two friends, tell a whole team. Uh, that'd be brilliant. Um, and that'll obviously give me a little more encouragement to uh, either put out more decks or more requested decks. Um, but if that's all you were here for, you guys are free to go. Class is dismissed. You guys have a lovely, wonderful day. For everybody else, let's pick this one apart and give you guys the why and the what. So with the skill I'm just going to attack, we get two things. We get the ability every main phase to add 100 points to our monster until the end of the turn, which is a super anime effect of doom right there. And then secondly, during the battle phase when the opponent activates a trap card, we can negate and reset that trap. And again, because it has been reset, uh, it's not uh, available to activate uh, a second time that same turn. And again, we're talking about three zones because it's speed duel uh so again that's uh, one one out of three if they actually had a full back row um but it's fine uh and again we're going to be playing pitch black war wolf which is going to reinforce this effect so we're really just using this for the uh minuscule gains uh, we are going to use three copies of enraged battle ox uh realistically uh, we ran him three instead of two. It was originally two in my build and a triple pitch black war wolf. But again, uh, I'm just going to attack. He's actually fairly consistent at blocking the usual one trap per round. Uh, and therefore, the pitch black war wolf, in my mind, was able to go down to two. We were able to put, cast uh, the enraged battle ox at a three. It's important because uh, since we're just playing beast warriors, uh, all our monsters will have piercing uh, while this character is face up on the field. So he'll have piercing. Manicore has piercing. Vorse Raider has piercing. Pitch Black War Wolf has piercing. And everybody in the deck has access to our battle trap at the end. So everybody's going to gain strength off of the uh, Fire Formation Tankies. 
Uh, somebody's going to get the extra 100 from I'm just going to attack. And then everybody's eligible for the extra 800 on the horn. So it's just a way of compounding and making sure that every time we get the chance to do some damage, we are doing that damage. And again, with 4,000 hit points in this game, uh, or at least the style of the game, every little bit's really going to matter. So yeah, three copies of that. We're going to use the two mana cores of darkness again. We don't want the baboon. Unfortunately, the baboon cannot be triggered during battle. This character, however, states during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can send a beast, beast warrior, or a wing beast from your hand or the field. That's a, that's very important. Special summon this card from the graveyard. So while we're setting up a field presence, we can actually still maintain that and actually build during the end phase while the Horn of the Phantom Beast is still going to be lined up and ready to take this character past Blue Eyes stats. Um, he's not very searchable, but what, it, what we're again going to do, we're just going to play Foolish Burial, toss him into the discard pile as soon as we can, and then just start playing with him. As soon as we have one Fire Formation tanky on the field, he is Monarch Strength. If we have that plus I'm just going to attack, he could beat a Monarch. And of course, as long as Jinzo is nowhere to be found or meets one of our Books of Moon, we will be able to smash over Jinzo as well and then utilize the Horn of the Phantom Beast as well. Uh, just fantastic. It doesn't matter that we're special summoning him. We're not using Bashing Shield in this deck. Um, and he's got that sick art. Uh, always been a, a real favorite card of mine. Um, and, um, and again, he just doesn't have any weakness due to a, uh, to an errata. So very cool. Pitch black Warwolf, Very simple. Opponent cannot activate traps during the battle phase. Uh, and this is why I say that he, he's really just there to reinforce. I'm just going to attack. Uh, it's not that we get to reset it or tell them, yeah, yes or no. Uh, this is just straight up. No. And so you want to run him at two. Uh, the Vorus Raider, again, here just for the stats. He's a four-star. He's got the 1900. And, again, he's going to be searchable with our tankies. Uh, he's going to be equipable with the Phantom Horn Beast. Uh, Phantom Beast Horn, sorry. Um, and, again, if I wanted to add allures, uh, he, between him and the Pitch Black Warwolf, they actually uh, do allow you to do that. So if you do feel the need to add some draw power that way, uh, Allure of Darkness would be more stable than trying to use uh, whatever it was, the uh, the Cattle Call or the uh, Big Stampede. I, I can't remember the name of the spell right now. Um, again, Tankies. Uh, when this is activated, add a level 4 lower Beast Warrior from the deck to the hand. All Beast Warriors you control gain 100. You can only activate one of these per turn. But again, these, uh, these powers will stack. So if you do end up playing both of them, it's a uh, plus 200 to all your characters. And again... Uh, Mana Core of Darkness, he'll be able to get in or just go right over the cards like the Kaiser Glider, uh, at which point you'll just normal summon him again. Or uh, you'll you'll beat into uh, Jinzo, Grandmark, or what have you. Uh, so that's always good. Foolish Burial, again, we just want to... It, it's just a way to speed up the Mana Core and gain some uh, real presence to the field. And remember, you, you don't have to tribute the monster that's on your side of the field. You can pitch one from your hand. Uh, and again, that's sometimes all you need. Uh, and again, the three books of moon, it, it just helps to shut down so much of the meta right now and gives your beasts a better fighting chance. And again, with the enraged battle ox, uh, you're placing cards into defense mode, at which point all your boys are going to have the ability to go at those cards with the piercing damage. So as long as you outmuscle them, uh, this is a great way to actually be able to inflict more damage. Uh, so that's good too. Horn of the Phantom Beast, good setup, good trap. And an 800 power bonus is actually very hard to overcome. Uh, this one lets you target a beast, beast warrior that you control, equip it to it. Give it 800 attack. And then if the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the discard pile, then you get to start drawing cards. Right now, this is my draw method, and this is why I maximize this at 3. Um, of course, you can play this however you like. This is just a cookie cutter uh, guideline for you guys. Uh, this is how I do it. That's not always going to work for everybody. Again, the extra deck mostly only played once you have Waking the Dragon set up. And uh, most of the time, your opponent's going to be trying to snipe for your Horns of the Phantom Beast. Uh, and this will allow you to do well. And again, uh, 
you know, Arcana Knight wants to protect himself. Uh, Blue Eyes just happens to be the strongest in the game right now. Senshi happens to be able to protect himself and also deactivate trap cards. Uh, and Restrict is like the ultimate turnaround uh, reversal monster for right now. So uh, they've all learned their spots. Uh, the sideboard, side deck, uh, the Cosmic Cyclones, again, sometimes we're going to be playing up against people who have prepared to go off against Inner Conflict. So again, uh, Zone of the Spirit is going to be out there quite often. Uh, there will be times where you're going to be facing other decks that have a mirror match set up for you. Um, so sometimes, you know, equip cards, you're going to want to, you know, pop those off. Got the single cross out again. I felt with the triple horns, I felt like we were probably getting enough draws in the deck. Uh, we were able to just put one of these in the side. Again, for those stallish decks, uh, just get that monster out of your way. The Wakings, the Dragons, uh, just the best way to get your extra deck viable and punish your opponent for trying to take out your back row. And then the one copy, Zoma the Spirit. Again, uh, I do tend to draw this when I need this. So I've never really needed more than one, uh, but when I do, I usually put two, and it's usually in the main. Uh, usually because I have the space, and of course because it generates a monster all on its own. Um, but this is, uh, again, when you end up finding out that you're going to be playing up against Inner Conflict, Zoma, usually the best way to combat that. Wait for them to snatch your monster and then flip it. So that is the deck. I was asked a question recently, and... I hope I didn't make anybody mad because, believe it or not, the 250 sub video, that was actually pre-taped. I just kept it in a deck box nearby and just kept teasing it until uh, I was going to have to actually release that video. So I didn't answer the question then, even though that should have been the uh, video that I answered the question on. So I'm going to answer it today. So I was asked what my favorite type of deck to play is. Um... And it's really just anything that has some personality to it. Uh, so to give you a good example, like I love chaos stacks. I always have. Um, and it was always because while you play a few core cards, the, the core concept changes from deck to deck to deck with it. So you could play a chaos stun uh, and it could be Thunder Dragon chaos stun. And then you will turn around and in a couple of weeks it'll be, you know, Dream Mirrors because they're dark and light. Or you'll play a uh, Light Sworn Zombie version uh, because there's a lot of great interplay between all of that. Or, you know, uh, that old boss monster, WTF Sworn, uh, which was kind of a cool project. It was like a 60 card deck that essentially piloted itself. Uh, Dark World Fabled was a very cool version that I'd seen somebody play once. Um, I, I've seen a lot of Chaos decks. Chaos, I guess, is probably my favorite. Um, the only issue with me in Chaos right now is I didn't buy a lot of Toon Chaos. Um, it just really wasn't in the budget at the time. I had some other things that actually needed to uh, take precedence. And uh, I never got the uh, any of the Chaos cards from it. Uh, I bought a couple packs. I ended up getting like two Toon Terrors. And like that was about it, I think. But yeah, there, like I don't have the, the Daedalus. I don't have the Creator, the, the Valkyria. Uh, I think there was a Field Spell or something that came out. Uh, I, did, I didn't get any of that stuff. So uh, unfortunately... Um, poor me, right? But, uh, no, Chaos. Chaos is probably one of my favorite decks out there. And it's just because it's so versatile as a concept. Uh, it's very non-linear, but there's, you know, certain things that'll always beat it. So, I hope that answers that. I hope that you guys all enjoyed this deck. I'm sorry for being so long-winded with the answer, but I hope that this all helps out. And, uh... I gotta get to work. My wife really does want me to redo her black wings for her birthday. And I've only got a couple of days left. So I gotta get to work on that. I'll see you guys.